Mother's Day is very special to me. Uh, I got a red light. Uh, we'll just stay right here. Uh, my mother died in 1992. And I was at the hospital the last day, my last Mother's Day with my mother. And we talked to her. And I remember that Mother's Day and it's pretty rough sometimes. So I don't know if y'all will tear up. But if you do, if you start, I'm going to start. Okay. Proverbs, look at verse 20. Chapter 6, verse 20. My son, keep your father's command. That sounds good, doesn't it? We know our dad had to rule in the house. So fathers, sons, keep your father's command and do not forsake the law of your mother. Bind them continually upon your heart. Tie them around your neck. When you roam, they will lead you. When you sleep, they will keep you. And when you awake, they will speak with you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us. For the love that you show us. For the grace and mercy that you send our way. And Lord, we're here to worship you. And Father, in worshiping you, we begin to look at our mothers and we realize, Father God, the closest thing we have to your love that we can actually touch and feel is the love mothers have for their children. So Father, bless us and be good to us. We pray in your son's name. I remember times with my mother when she laid down the law. Y'all ever had that? I remember times when my mother, who loved me enough that she would take a switch and she would whip me because I needed it. I remember one morning when I was 18 years old at 4 o'clock in the morning in Benton, Mississippi, when I should have been home at 10 o'clock in the evening, my mama come looking for me and my 21 or 22 friends that were there with us at, under the store at Berry's at Benton, Mississippi. And she pulled into the parking lot and rolled the window down and said, Andy, are you coming home? To which I turned around and looked at all of my friends and said, I see y'all maybe. And my best friend said, please don't call my mama. That's what they do, you know. God's been good to us. But I want to take a moment and I want to remind you of something. Something sometimes when I prepare for Mother's Day that I tend to forget. That not everyone had a mother like I had. I have a friend back in Carthage whose mother took her to her uncle's, dropped her off, and never went back to get her. Mother's Day is not always a blessing. So let me just tell you, if you have a mother that loved you, a mother that cared for you, a mother that comforts you, that is a gift from God to you. And she fulfilled her responsibilities and her role. But not every mother does that. It's a good thing to have a mother that will take a belt to your behind when you need it. And I know in this day and time that's frowned upon. You might want to sue your parents over it, or you might want to uh, get in trouble with the law. But I'm telling you, the rod of correction will drive a child far from his or her unrighteousness. As you look at this passage of Scripture, it's your father's giving you some commands, but your mother has laid down the law. And with these commands and these laws, you need to bind them continually upon your heart. You need to tie them around your neck. In other words, you need to remember where you came from. You need to remember who reared you up and how they reared you up. And you need to never embarrass your mother. Nor your father. I want you to 
where you sit, think back in your mind to the last time you embarrassed your parents. And we've all done it. I don't care who you are or how good you think you are, but at some point in your life, you have embarrassed your parents. And they still love you. They still love you. It says, when you roam, who you are will lead you. Now think about that. When you're out at 4 o'clock in the morning, sometimes it doesn't look like that. But if you've been raised right, you're going to come back to the things that you were taught. When you awake, they will speak with you. You will remember who you are. For the commandment is a lamp. I love that. And the law is a light. Reproofs of instruction are the way of life. So I want you to think about that little devotion. And now I want you to turn with me to Exodus chapter 2. Because what is Mother's Day without looking at a mother? A scriptural mother. That was fearful. That was afraid for her children. And I want you to know, young people, you need to hear me. Your parents, if they love you, they are fearful for you today. We live in a society that is out of control. We live in a world where the family is constantly under attack. We live in a world where the norm has been turned upside down, and the only hope you have is having godly parents and a mother that will take a stand. You know, when I was 12 years old, I decided one day, me and my older brother, that we wanted to go hunting on Sunday morning. And so we got up early. And we gathered up our little shotguns. I had a single shot, 16 gauge shotgun. And we going squirrel hunting before church. Kind of reminds me of Mr. Biscuit over there, the stories he's told me. Y'all, he was a gay warden, but he knew some things too, okay? And we went out squirrel hunting. And we were going to get back in time to go to church. But we didn't. And do you know what my mama did? I never will forget this. They went on to church without us. And she had talked to the preacher. And when they got home and we were there, my mama loaded us up in the car and took us to the church. And our preacher preached us another sermon. <laughs> That's how much my mama loved me. She wanted me to have the truth. Notice chapter 2 of Exodus in verse 1. And a man of the house of Levi went and took as a wife a daughter of Levi. That's the way it was supposed to be. So the woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a beautiful child, she hid him three months. Now let me set the background. Israel is growing. The nation of Israel is becoming populous in Egypt. And the Pharaoh and the Egyptians are worried about them, so they order the killing of the children. And so here is a child born into a woman, and the child is beautiful and healthy, and this mother, by nature, by the very nature of who she is, loves this child so much, she disobeys the civil authority, and she gives birth and keeps this child. She hides the child. For three months, she nurtured the child. But when she could no longer hide him, she took an ark of bulrushes and she made an ark and put the asphalt and patch or pitch, put the child in it, laid it in the reeds, and we know the story. She put Moses in the ark, left the daughter to watch over it. When you think about Moses, because you have to get the rest of the story, 
This child that was allowed to live because of a mother's determination, she was going to rear her child in a way that would please God. That child turned out to be the great leader of freedom for the children of Israel. And in Hebrews chapter 11, it says that Moses got to a point in his life where he had to decide whether he wanted all the money, all the prestige, and all the power that he could have, or he would go and he would lead God's people out to their freedom. It was his choice. And praise God for his mother that instilled in him the values that he needed that he led the children of Israel to freedom by trusting in God. How did that happen? Well, we know the story. She put the ark in the river and the princes came out to bathe and she saw and she heard that baby cry. And what every woman does when she hears a baby cry, praise the Lord, is what? You pick up that child. Now, if it had been an old guy... I don't know what we'd have done. We'd have called for the wife, I guess. And she kept that child, saved that child. And the daughter was watching. She said, go get me someone to nurse this child. And she went and got Moses' mother. And she kept that child and she weaned that child. How did Moses know what to do? At what point, what gave him the strength and the courage to say, I'm going to give up millions of dollars. I'm going to give up being the, the guy that every woman wants. I'm going to give up being the guy that everybody wants to be so that I can be lowly and nothing and lead God's people to freedom. What got him to that point was the teaching, I believe, of his mother. She had years to work with him. She had years to to install in him and instill in him the things of God and how to act and how to care for people. He was never a perfect man. He got ahead of God. He didn't get to enter the promised land. But he had the values that his mother instilled in him. That's a challenge. You heard me say that this world is out of control. You heard me say that there are things that are not right, and I'm not talking about somewhere else. I'm talking about here in Lauderdale County. Things are out of control. It used to be out west or up north, but the things that we can see in Mississippi ought to make you sick to your stomach. And the things that are being promoted, and I like the way Steve Ratcliffe said it today in Sunday school, The programs, they're programming us with the things we see on TV. That we ought to accept everything. That it ought to be all right. But the Bible, which is the standard by which we live, which has been around for thousands and thousands and thousands of years, that have caused the apostles to give their life believing it, says we ought to be different. That we shouldn't stand for the things that we see. We know we shouldn't be a part of it. But we should stand against it. And the Bible is very clear. We will answer for every word and deed that we commit and say. God knows what we do. But God requires an answer. Why did you do what you did. And as we remember the answer is not for God. He knows the answer is for us to think about. What we're doing and why we're doing it. And do we really love God? You know every year. But not this year. I, I get someone to come up. And say something about their mother. How good their mother has been to them. How much they love their mother. And I can't cover everyone. And I thought well if I get a family or two families a year. 
200 families, I, I wouldn't have to do it. I wouldn't have to be pastor for about 50 years. I could cover all the families. I want you, if your mother is here, to look at her right now and tell her you love her. If you can see your mother, look at her, tell her you love her. And there's a lot of you going to be looking over at Miss Pace. You got a whole crowd. Miss Dot, you're loaded up. Some of us don't have that, right? Some of us don't have children that are here. But if your children were here, they would tell you that they loved you. They would. I'm watching the clock, y'all. Carrie, y'all come. We got some deacons that are going to help us today.